Okay, so I love that song, and I, to me it seems like uh, there are a lot of Christians today that do not believe in that song. They don't believe in amazing grace. They don't believe Jesus did enough to save them, and I want to sort of show that to you uh, as plainly as I know that people are changing the definition of the word save to mean safe you're safe right now it's like uh, baseball right you're on second base as long as your foot's on that base you're safe but once you take that foot off you're not safe all right well this isn't a game all right once you are saved it's like crossing home plate you're saved forever there's no way to take it back there's no way to be tagged out you're in safe forever all right and that's a big difference between what these guys are teaching you're not on second base you've crossed home plate all right so when you're saved all right otherwise um, what you're saying is Jesus didn't do enough to save you there is no home plate right I don't know if that's a good analogy, but I want to show you. Uh, I don't know what this guy says. I know what he said. Let's see what he says here. And um, let's open this up. Basically, I ask him, do you admit that Jesus didn't do enough or did enough to save you? I'm just curious. Good luck trying to save yourself. And he says, good morning. And uh, so this is what I haven't read Jennings that's funny when people call him Jennings really sounds like we are lazy to walk with God every day yeah yep so if you believe Jesus did it all to save you you're lazy just saying I thought only teenagers said that but oh uh, initially Jesus did do all to save and deliver and set free and heal but after your decision form it's up to you whether you want to take the call to relationship seriously and daily engage him it's a relationship not just one time decision think about it yeah so he's he just he will not come out and say it what he's implying is that if you don't take the relationship with Jesus seriously you're gonna lose your salvation I don't know why well I do know why because it's because if they just came out and admit it they would look foolish they would feel foolish they would look foolish they'd be dumber than dog do so they gotta be very subtle with their words that's what it looks like to me alright instead of coming out and saying Jesus didn't do enough to save you. He's going to say, you're lazy. You're not taking his relationship seriously. And it's a partnership. So he saves you, but you got to save yourself. Think about it. Yeah, I'm thinking about it, Bill. Thinking about it real hard. It's not just a one-time decision. So... my decision or his decision do I save myself or does he save me and if he saves me which he does save me I don't save myself it, it's not just a one time he decided it's not just a one-time decision he did say he did uh, he decided to save me but that's not a one-time decision as soon as as soon as I sin then I lose my salvation. Is that right? If I don't take my relationship serious, all right, then I'm going to lose that salvation. Well, if that were the case, I was never saved to begin with. All right, and so am I on second base or did I cross home plate? If I'm on second base, I better take that second base serious. I better not take my foot off the bag, otherwise I'll get tagged out 
the devil will come in and tag me out, right? But if I cross home plate, I'm free. I can roam around. I can throw my helmet in the air. I can do all that good stuff. But if I'm still on second base, I might be safe. But I'm not saved. And so I think these people are these people are on second base. I've already crossed home plate. And that's because I put my faith in Jesus Christ. And it's, be, it's because of the amazing grace of God. All right? By grace are you saved through faith. Now, um, I wanted to, I, that's really all I wanted to say. Right? I mean, these guys here. Go back to this very first comment. I think I spoke yesterday morning in great detail about why I believe we are not one saved, always saved. Because I'm on second base and I'm keeping my foot there. Now, if you keep your foot there on second base, you're never going to make it to home plate, are you? You're never going to make it home and be free of that bondage. And really, when you're on second base, you are in bondage. You're tied to that base. <clears throat> if you get your foot off the base, you are in danger. But once you cross home plate, you're safe forever. Nothing can change that. And that's the difference, really, between being safe and being saved. And so uh, these people that imply you can lose your salvation, they don't believe you're saved at all. They just believe you're safe. They don't believe you crossed home plate. They believe that you're still on second base. Jesus did more than enough to save everyone on the planet. <laughs> but they have to receive that and then they have to receive it it's not given to them they got to receive it. well I'm not, I won't argue that they have to receive it that's true and then they have to continue oh they have to continue to keep their foot on the bag or they're gonna get tagged out they must continue to keep that foot on the bag because the devil's getting closer. So if you have to keep your foot on the bag, then Jesus didn't really save you at all. You're not saved at all. How can you have peace believing that if you take your foot off the bag, the devil can tag you out? You can't have peace, man. You're tied to that bag. And then if you're tied to that bag, you can never make it home. All right, look, unless you think you can grow long legs. Accepting Jesus is not just a bucket item list. Okay, well, um, accept, you accept Jesus, that's fine. But are you saving yourself? You know, <clears throat> did you save yourself when you accepted Jesus? I see these people look at from one direction they don't see it from all directions because it's not you that save yourself it's Jesus that saves you and he's the one that chooses you you don't choose him he chooses you so it's not the work you do it's the work that was done for you or something we do once and then call it good. Oh, you accept Jesus every day, don't you? Well, you got to be careful about that. Um, you know, accepting Jesus every day, that's fine. But think about this. If we go to Matthew 7. All right, so not everybody that says, Lord, Lord shall I turn to the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven and the will of my father is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ 
Now, if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to believe that, um, well, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name do many wonderful works, or in thy name done many wonderful works. And, you know, slow down just a little bit here, and what's verse 22 saying? Have we not prophesied in thy name? Which means, have we not taught in the name of Jesus Christ? Do we not preach the Bible in the name of Jesus? Go back one step. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, being I'm Jesus, Jesus, I accept you, I accept you, Jesus. Have we not taught in your name? And in thy name have we not cast out devils? Have we not helped those with their drug addiction, their alcohol addiction, their marital problems, casting out devils? Have we not done all that in your name? And in thy name done many wonderful works. You know, give money to the church, go help neighbors build, rebuild their garage and do their roofs and mow their yards and help the old ladies across the street and all that sort of stuff. Have we not done many wonderful works in your name? And then what's Jesus say? Then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. Now, is it inequity to teach and preach the Bible in the name of Jesus Christ? Is it inequity to cast out devils, to help people with their drug addictions, their alcohol addictions, and their marital problems, and so forth? Is that inequity? Is it inequity to help people with their roofs, and their garages, and their yards, and helping old ladies walk across the street? Is that inequity? No. These are all good things. So why does he say ye that work in equity? Well, it's obvious. It's because they think that these things, prophesying in the name of Jesus, casting out devils in the name of Jesus, doing many wonderful works in the name of Jesus, they believe that's going to save them. They believe their good deeds will save them. And because they believe that there's what they're doing is going to save them, it's all inequity. That's what he's talking about there. And so you go over here, and the, what this gentleman says is, well, it's not a bucket list item. We got to go. We do once and then call it good. We it actually involves determination, determination. You know, casting out devils, prophesying on thy name, and doing many wonderful works. Determination. Determination to continue, continue to follow him all the days of your life. It's a journey. It's a process. You're being saved. You're not saved. It's determination. you got to be determined. Otherwise, you're going to lose your salvation. Well, Bill... Um, you're setting yourself up to lose it, but not only are you setting yourself up to lose it, you never had it to begin with. All right, buddy. All right, and it's too bad, but it, what makes this worse? Okay, I can I can be okay with this guy going to hell. What makes it bad though is he's gonna influence others. He's gonna influence my children's children, and so on and so forth. He's going to influence your children and your children's children. It's the same spirit uh, that exists in the world today. It's a bad spirit, bad influence. And uh, this joker has the boldness to speak up because there are so many other people who are preaching against the grace of God and saying you got to go out there and you got to do good works. You got to cast out devils and prophesy in thy name, do many wonderful works and all this and that to save yourself. What they won't say is, well, Jesus didn't do enough to save you. 
all right you got to go out there and save yourself and um, boy they are in for a rude awakening on the day the Lord Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of heaven and we are lifted up to be with the Lord because we have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ to save us once and forever so once saved always saved is the gospel of Jesus Christ without it it is impossible to have peace there's no possible way for you to believe that you can lose your salvation and have peace there's nothing more important in life than eternal salvation and for you to believe you can lose it you got to be on the edge of your seat all the time you got to have your foot firmly planted on second base the whole time you're never going to make it home all right and i'm telling you cross home plate once you cross home plate once you believe in the lord jesus christ once you are born of the spirit of god you are saved forever they can't take that run off the board it's there forever all right